Hello and welcome to the fourth edition of the Let's Talk It Out podcast. I'm Hal Cliff Schultz, aka Trey Busy. Um, you guys know that by now. I probably said it three more times in addition to me just saying it just now. So, good evening. I hope everybody's having a good evening. I hope everyone had a good day at work, a good work week. Uh, we're just here to have a conversation today. I'm chilled out, man, we're relaxed. I have a special guest for you guys. But before we get into the special guest, like I said, I like to thank everybody for tuning in last week. I always thank people for their feedback to me, for I thank people for reaching out to me, because that means a lot to me. Honestly, like you guys don't have to take the time out of your day to reach out and say something. You don't have to even talk to me at all. You don't even have to act, come inside the chat room. You don't have to listen to the podcast. But the fact that you guys do that, and not only do you do it, but you also say that it impacts your life a lot. It just means a lot to me. Like I've had two instances recently that just like really just stood out to me. So I had I had this guy named Justin Atkinson. He literally just followed me on Twitter no longer than an hour ago. He sent me a message saying, I have a few things I want to share with you. First, I love the platform you started, especially for us men. He said he wanted to share something with me. So what he wanted to share with me was, is there or it's not? We don't need to justify love. Real love is accepting other people the way they are. You have to justify why you like that person. You only see what you want to see. You lie to yourself just to make yourself right. Your love will not change only one. If others change, it's because they want change. If we true to change there, it means we don't like them. And that really stuck out to me for the fact that people do love conditionally. Um, I, this is not the topic for tonight, but I just wanted to talk about it for a little bit because for him to be able to obviously share this work with me, and I just wanted to share with you guys because this is some really, you know, this is really deep. People do love you conditionally. They don't love you for who you are sometimes, and that's not good. That's not acceptable. You should love people unconditionally or else not love them at all. You know, you shouldn't tell somebody, hey, I love you, but I want you to change this about you. That's not good to me, man. That's not acceptable. So thank you for sharing that with me, Justin. I'm going to read your work. And thank you for tuning in tonight, man. I really appreciate that. That means a lot to me. So another person I want to shout out was Christopher Holden. Christopher went out of his way to send me an email. I didn't even know people sent me emails. Um, he sent me an email saying it's fantastic information, and he enjoyed the show. And he said there's so many people suffering. His numbers are staggering. He deals with anxiety attacks. We, I do too, man. Trust me. I think I had one the other day. He said, I'm greatly appreciative of what you're doing. I live in a totally dysfunctional home, man. We, man, look, we've all been there before. Trust me. Uh, he said, you really got, got me to get over something like that? He said, I found your first show to be very insightful and extremely informative. He said, awesome, actually. I listened a few times. So thank you, Christopher B. Holden. Christopher B. Holden for sending me that email and sharing that information. That's, like I said, man, I... I'm trying my best to give people an outlet. That's what the chat room's for. I want you to come in here. Feel free to talk. You don't have to talk. You can just read what other people are saying. The chat room is here to help everybody out. That's the whole purpose of the chat room. So before I go any further, I want to introduce the guests. But before I introduce the guests, I want to read some statistics about what I'm going to be talking about tonight. So... Domestic violence can cause an adverse ripple effect on the emotional and psychological state of a survivor. Panic attacks, post-traumatic stress syndrome, substance abuse, depression, and anxiety are often ignited by domestic violence and or other severe forms of abuse. Issues surrounding poor mental health are often ignored or go unaddressed by society. Coping with emotional and psychological traumas often become burdensome for survivors, stabilizing basically Resources can become strenuous and tedious. People living with mental illness are overrepresented in homelessness, copulations, prisons, and often experience economic injustices. Suicidal tendencies, substance abuse, and psychotic episodes can all be sparked by violence and maltreatment. Individuals may simultaneously suffer from, other, from more than one mental illness, and children exposed to, this is most important to me, children exposed to domestic violence are at risk for development, developmental delays, psychiatric disorders, school difficulties, quote, school difficulties. So people think kids are just acting bad just because they, they choose to act like that. No, it's because that they've been exposed to domestic violence. Aggressive behavior, 
they think their kids are just have demons in them. No, it's because you have domestic violence in your house and low self-esteem. While being exposed to a traumatic experience can trigger mental health problems, living with a severe mental illness is likely to increase the vulnerability of a person being abused. Although abuse can cause emotional scarring, the majority of victims do not develop serious mental health issues. The majority. Some still do, though. So about 50% of domestic violence incidents go unreported. 50%. So half the time, you don't know what's going on with your friends, your family, uh, coworkers, anyone. You don't know what's going on with them. They can have anything going on at home. So... The source for this information is the National Coalition Against Domestic Violence. So tonight, my guest that I have coming on to talk to you guys is none other than my little sister, Anna Lifshultz, who is a U of I graduate, and she's also an advocate to stop domestic violence. Anna, talk to the people. Hi, everybody. Happy to be on the show tonight with you guys. Um, I've been looking forward to this, so... Like my brother said, domestic violence is a very common but extremely underreported and just not talked about issue. So tonight we're going to talk about it. Let's talk it out, you know. Let's talk it out. Exactly. That's exactly the whole Mm -hmm. fucking purpose of the show. Um, (laughs) We're going to talk about stigmas in the community. Uh, Mm -hmm. We're going to talk about first experiences just how it's viewed. So I'm going to ask you, Anna, because you've recently done studies on it. Give me your first impression, like domestic violence. Like, What's the first thing that comes to mind for you when you hear that? Um, so I'm guilty of, you know, the stigma that when you think of domestic violence, it's always a woman, you know, being abused, physically abused by a man and, that's not always the case. Sometimes it's the other way around. The man is in abuse, and it's also not always physical. Emotional abuse is domestic violence, too. And I think people ignore that or just aren't aware that emotional physical abuse as physical abuse and as physical abuse. And it leaves just as much of a, you know, mark on an individual. So your body... You know, not physically, but emotionally, your body is is hardwired to receive what someone's giving you. So if someone's giving you like, you know, if they're emotionally unavailable, your body's going to receive that. And you may not want to you may not want to express it, but your body is going to express it eventually. That's how depression kicks in. Like you, you someone's emotionally unavailable to you, like say something as simple as giving you a hug when they see you or something like that, man, like that, especially if it's someone that you really care about or if you're in a relationship with that, that really uh, messes with you and affects you. So that, and if someone being emotionally unavailable to you can also be a, a form of domestic violence. It's not direct, you know, it's not like the commercials when they show the girls with the black eyes, but if you have a man that's not being who you want them to be as far as like emotionally that affects you. So, I want to go into go dive into a little deeper. So, Annie, when you when you say emotional, give me ex, give me your example of that. Like, what can be an emotional ver- version of domestic violence? Well, for me, when I think of emotional abuse, is like your partner, you know, talking down on you, telling you you're worthless, basically making you believe that without them. You're nothing. You can't do anything without them. If you try to leave me, you're not going to be able to go anywhere. You're just going to come back, you know, calling your partner stupid, fat, you know, just basically giving them low self-esteem and making them think that they can't do, they can't live without you, you know? And that's a form of domestic violence. That's what domestic violence is, is trying to just get control of your partner, whether that's physical or mental. I personally believe that the goal for domestic violence is just to have mental control over your partner. And that's what I think of when I think of emotional abuse is, you know, just cursing at your partner and just telling them just terrible things to make them just feel terrible about themselves, which, you know, come bring you to like the depression that you were talking about. And, you know, low self-esteem and that sort of thing. So that all ties in together there with the emotional abuse. 
Yeah, that that whole oh, you're never gonna find anybody better than me. Please, it's probably about at least I can go to lo- local grocery store and find like at least five people that are better than you. That's just <laughs> that's them that's them yeah. planting that seed in you, and and they plant that seed in you. If someone tells you you'll never find anybody better than you, you better pick that seed out and throw it away because that seed, if you leave it inside you and you don't handle it mentally, you will literally believe that, and you'll find yourself stuck with this person for years. Just because yeah. they found, they thought it was okay to tell you, "Hey, you'll never find anybody better than me." So, and go ahead, Anna. I was gonna say that's the reason that you know that's one of the reasons that domestic violence is so underreported because these victims feel like they don't deserve to get help, or they feel like you know they deserve the treatment that they're getting. So, of course, they're not gonna try to you know seek help at all because they don't know any better or they don't feel like they deserve it. You know. They 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 found themselves in a situation where it's kind of like they don't want to. Another thing about human beings mentally, we we find ourselves in a situation where we feel comfortable. I'm comfortable with this person, so I don't want to venture off and be alone because I don't want to be alone. I'm comfortable with this person, so they feel like they get themselves in a situation where they feel like they don't want to move on. They don't want to try something different because this person is what they know. This is a person I spent years with. This is a person uh-huh. that I've been around so long. I can't live without this person. When you got you got to get that thought out of your mind, trust me because you get rid of that person over time things can get better. Emotionally yeah. they they, ab- they abuse you, but they don't understand that. And they just think that this person is everything to me right now and I can't live without them. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So another thing I want to talk about is this is the stigmas in the community. I mean we did we did say something about emotionally, but physical abuse is the main thing with domestic violence. Violence, when you think about violence, what's the first thing that pop in your mind? You think about blood and you know, someone hitting somebody and stuff like that. That domestic violence is the number one thing is physical. So Yeah. Uh and you want to go ahead and give a backstory on that? One of the reasons domestic violence is so important to me is because, you know, I did witness it for a period of time in my life. So that's, like you said, when I hear domestic violence, that's what I think about is, you know, what I saw my mom go through. So. Me and Anna have the same mom, by the way, in case you guys are wondering. Yeah, but go sorry. ahead, Anna. <laughs> go ahead. Yeah, so... You know, I personally and, you know, third, well, Trey, I guess that's what y'all call him, it's Trey. Um, He, you know, has different experiences than I do. I never actually witnessed any, like, I never actually saw the abuse, but, you know, I heard, you know, fight through the wall. I have seen, you know, the bruises, uh, broken arms, you know, that sort of thing. So that type of thing with domestic violence, it, 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 it affects more than just the victim. It's the families too, you know, because there's, everybody has a family. So whether or not it's kids in the house, you know, even if it's just a sibling or a close friend, it's affecting these people too because you know they're witnessing it and they're like, "Why? Like, why is this happening? Why aren't you doing anything about it? Or like, what can I do?" It's like almost a helpless feeling of what can I do? Why? Can, how can I stop this? You know. You you do feel very powerless, especially when you're at a young age. And one of the things about domestic violence that's that's you know it's not talked about enough, and it's not noticed enough. I've been doing a lot of reading. And I found, discovered that literally, first of all, it didn't start with that person. He didn't just wake yeah. up one day and decide to put his hands on somebody. It starts, yeah. it's it's deeper than that. It's deep family rooted. So back in like maybe his father, his grandfather, everything travels genetically. A lot of people say it's mentally a child, it travels, you know, okay. You get, you get genetics physically from people like the DNA, but mentally and emotionally, that stuff travels with you as well. Like when, when your mom's pregnant with you, what she goes through and her feelings and her stress, that travels to you too. And it's inside you as an embryo and as a kid. That stuff is inside you. So that's why it's very important that, you know, when someone's pregnant, that they have a stress-free and, you know, emotionally free 
pregnancy because that travels to the kid. Even when your grandmother, this is this how crazy and how deep it goes. When your grandmother is pregnant with your mother, what the grandmother goes to can message you as well. I've, I've heard a story about somebody's grandmother surviving the Holocaust and the kid, the mother's daughter, obviously the granddaughter of the mother, grandmother that survived the Holocaust. She was, she would like say she would stay up late at night and have like these feelings of like of anxiety and you know depression because obviously because the grandmother she didn't know where it was coming from but it wasn't until she thought about it and figured it out that the grandmother feelings transferred to her and that's that's how deep it goes and like when it goes when when it comes to uh when it comes to domestic violence i'm sorry i'm getting a little bit excited this is so much on my mind about it but it starts off it doesn't start off with just that person it, it travels it's genetic it's, it, it travels with you mentally and emotionally and spiritually. It travels through that person to someone else. That's why it's very important for you to stop right now and make sure that you put yourself in healthy situations. Everybody who's listening right now, if you're dealing with anything in your life, you know, you can reach out to me. You can reach out to just reach out to me, honestly, just, you know, just because I'll be willing to talk to you. Reach out yeah. to me and. uh Anna's going to give a little bit more information about it, but it's important for you to stop it right now, today. You know, whenever you hear this, it's important to stop it right now because you don't want your kids and your grandkids to experience the same troubles you're going through because genetically it does transfer over to the child. So, Anna, you got something to say? Yeah, I just, domestic violence really is a cycle. Like, it, it, it it's a cycle. Like, you see it and then... You'll, you'll tell yourself, you know, I don't ever want to do that. Or, you know, some people see it and think it's normal. And then they do it to their husband or wife. And then their kids end up doing it to their spouse. So it, it really is a cycle. And the only thing to do is to, you know, stop it in its track and bring awareness to it. Like, that's the biggest thing is that there's nobody talks about it. So nobody knows that there are so many resources out here like um, like Thur said, don't ever like just think that you have to go through it. Like if you're in a bad situation, there are resources. He said, you know, you can reach out to him. I actually have some, I have a list of some places. If you're in the Chicago area, there's several places that you can go to. One of them, a safe place. It's a place called Between Friends, which is a um, shelter. So there's, there's places that, you know, are there for people going through this. You don't have to just go through it and continue going through it. There's other options, you know. Even if you feel like, well, I, I just, I can't go right now, or I just, I can't do this. It's, the first step is to just do it. Like, you just have to do it. Mace, Anna, can you uh, repeat a couple more of those? Because all those put them inside the... He's putting them in the chat room right now for everybody to have like, access to them. Okay. Um, the first one is called A Safe Place. That's Zion, Illinois. Um, there's a place called Between Friends. And this was formerly called Friends with Battered Women and Their Children. There's a place called Center on Halstead. There's a place called Crisis Center for South Suburbia, and that's in Tilly Park. There's a place called Family Rescue, and that's in Chicago. House of the Good Shepherd is in Chicago as well. Do we have um? Do we have any like nationwide or like worldwide websites? Yeah. Because because some of the listeners are not in Chicago, unfortunately. I wish they were yeah, all here. Yeah, so I actually have another list with a more broad, you know. So. And let me and let me say some things. Let me say some things, and I don't, I don't mean to cut you off. You know, but you go ahead and get the list ready. I'm gonna go ahead and say a couple things. So, like I said earlier, if you find yourself like immediately inside of an abusive relationship right now today, at 8:22 p.m. Central Time on on October 18th, 2018, I need you to step back and remove yourself from that because you do not want this cycle to keep going i don't want you to go through that and i don't want you it goes on it passes on it's not just you it goes on to your kids and your grandkids like i'm telling you 
the research that there's been scientifically proven that this happens. People think just be, just because they go through some, oh, my kids gonna have a better life. You know, they seen it happen, but I make sure I go put them through this, and they're gonna automatically be better. No, from the time that you're that you have eggs inside you, the, you know, once you get pregnant, everything that you go through, it transfers over to your children. So I need you to make sure that you are in a very healthy relationship right now today. If you're not in a healthy relationship, get out of it because there's no point in staying in a relationship that's not healthy. Sorry about that. I go ahead and list the list. That's okay. Um, I just want to say again, domestic violence also, you know, it affects men too. I know it's more like talked about for women, but I know that there are men that suffer from domestic violence just because you're a man and, you know, Maybe the hits don't hurt or whatever the case is, it's toxic and it's not a good situation. So even if you're a guy and you're, like, brushing it off because whatever reason, that's not an okay situation for you to be in. So, yeah, so I, but, I know it's like a lot, a lot of men do do that and they, they be like, oh, she just get like that sometimes. So just because she can't physically hurt you. So it doesn't mean that you should allow it to happen. You know, a lot of women do throw stuff at men and, you know, hit men. And men, men there's a, there's a, a double standard that men are not supposed to put their hands on women. Um, and women put their hands on men all the time. You know, they, they get yeah. angry and throw stuff at them. Like the situation with Chris Brown, we spent years bashing him. Years mm-hmm. bashing this man. And we've never once, you know, a lot of people didn't listen to the interview and find out that she attacked him first. So yeah. I'm not saying he's right for doing what he did, but I I could promise you, you know, I can guarantee you that's not the first time that situation has happened in that relationship for them. I could promise mm-hmm. you that. That's the first time it's got out of hand, but that's not the first time it happened. These situations are reoccurring and they don't stop. You know, oh, we're having good, you know, we're having a good day or oh, we're having a good week. Oh, he hasn't yeah. hit me in a long time. When people say stuff like that, man, that just tells me that mentally you have accepted that that this person is uh, physically abusive to you. And that's that's sad to me, man. Like, you should not accept that. Someone should never put their hands on you like that. So, All right. And you saw you got something to say. Go ahead and take it. No, I was just listening I, I have the list though for you know go ahead read um, off for so the first one is the national domestic violence hotline do you want me to like read the phone number or yeah all that the website? If, 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 if okay. you give it all because all those gonna put inside the chat room for everybody okay cool so the phone number for that is 1-800-799-7233 and the website is www.ndvh.org the next one that I have is Americans Overseas Domestic Violence Crisis Center. It's an international toll-free number that's available 24-7. The phone number for that is 1-866-879-6636. And the website is www.866uswoman.org. The last one I'm going to give is the National Resource Center on Domestic Violence. And the phone number for that is one 800 Five three seven two two three eight, and the website is www.nrcbv.org. So again, these are just a few resources. If you just even just Google, you know, you can find resources in your area or whatever. It's just they're out there. It's, it's for so many resources. So I got a question for you, Anna. Uh, I got a question. Someone says, what are some signs that we could look for in someone who is hiding abuse? You know, that's a hard one. Well, now, I said there, you I'm know. Not, it's, it's kind of general, too. Like, are they, yeah. are they hiding abuse? You know, are they hiding the fact that they, they will abuse you? Or they're, are they hiding the, the fact that they've been through some kind of abuse before in the past? That's not really specific, but um, certain things trigger them. Like, that's a certain word, if they're hiding abuse from the past, certain things trigger them. Like, uh, say you guys get into a disagreement and they just get to like just acting just like really like 
withheld from you. Like they just feel like they gotta leave the room, or they like, you know, I don't want to talk about this. I don't want to argue about this. It's just like, well, leave. Maybe they because they think that 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 the disagreement is gonna lead towards you guys actually physically attacking each other. That could be a sign of hiding abuse. What you think? Yeah, I agree. But also, like, for if you're you like somebody you're close to is hiding domestic violence, like if you're thinking about that, just like trying to see, you know, something that I always look at is how controlling the other partner is and just like, you know, how your friend or family member talks about that person and just like, you know, watching them while they're out, if it seems like she will, she or he only like moves when they move or like they're taking directions. Like, is it, it's signs like that that you have to look for, the whole controlling thing. Because like I mentioned earlier, a big part of domestic violence is wanting to have control over, you know, your, your partner's mind. And so that's a big thing is to just pay attention to, like, you know, the friend that w- won't do anything that her boyfriend doesn't allow her to do. Like, that sort of thing is a big sign for me. So your mother's on a on a rampage right now in the chat room. She she says signs are they're secretive, they shy away, they're overly willing to please and be accepted, and that kind of makes sense. Like they they're overly willing to be submissive because they don't want mm-hmm. they have a fear of being in disagreement with you because they don't want you to obviously abuse them because that's what they've been through before. They're not willing to stand their own ground and be their own person. Pretty much right. that's what I take away from what she's saying. Uh, someone who's micromanaging and needing from partners. Yeah, I I don't the whole micromanaging thing. Like I I do hate that. Like I know you and at work, you know, you hate someone who always feels like they gotta tell you how to do everything. That's that's mm-hmm. one of the most annoying things that could ever possibly happen. So I can only imagine how that's like in a relationship. I couldn't be in a relationship with somebody who feels like they have to hold my hand through it. You know, they have to direct me through it. I'm a grown man. I should be able to make my own decisions. So right. Yeah, your, your mom is on here just going off. <laughs> she's, on, she's on a rampage right now, just giving the information. I should have called her in. Uh, yeah, she's she's right, though. Like, literally, someone who's being submissive. So, like, okay, when I take another thing I take away from that is when, when you ask somebody their opinion, they're just like, oh, whatever you want to do, you know. Like, you want to know what they want. Like, do you remember that movie Coming to America? When he was about yeah. to get married to the to the to that woman, <laughs> and see like he took her to the back room to talk to her in the beginning. He kept asking her. He was like, "What's your favorite color?" He's like, "Oh, whatever your favorite color is." He's like, "Oh, what do you like to eat?" Oh, whatever you like to eat. When I think <laughs> of someone being over, overly submissive, that's immediately what I think about that scene on Coming to America when he, she was he was given a bride and she literally was like, "Whatever your, is yours, whatever your favorite is, that's my favorite," and that's right. like a kind of like a passive way of being like someone who's dealt with you know domestic violence like not not overly noticeable at first but over time you can't notice that okay it gets becomes kind of annoying i want you to be your own person you know what else you got anna go ahead go ahead and take the floor well i just back to what you were just saying about the sign something else i you know thought of from what i saw in domestic violence a lot of times they don't want their partner to be looked at by other people. So they will, you know, make their partner wear certain things and, you know, look a certain way, you know, put on weight. Um, me personally, I remember my mom, she used to, <laughs> she look, used to look very different than she does now. You know, she used to wear these sweaters and, she had this weight on her. I just thought she liked sweaters or whatever, but she's just a completely different person now, so to speak. So it's like thinking about it, it's crazy to see how much being in a bad situation can change a person and like just take away, you know, who they are completely. Just being in control. Being controlling early on should be the telltale sign of someone who was, you know, abusive domestically. Mm-hmm. So if someone tells you, hey, you know, I'm about to go out with my girlfriends tonight. Oh, no, you're not. You're about to stay in the house with me. Mm-hmm. Why can't you go out with your girlfriends? Hey, I'm about to go get my hair done. Oh, no, you're not. You're fine the way you are. You know, hey, I'm about to go get mm-hmm. my nails done. No, you're not. 
you know, eyebrows or whatever, whatever you try to do to make yourself, you know, feel pretty or whatever you do that you normally did before a relationship. And they try to shut that down early on. Those are those are very telling signs of what kind of person this is like, hey, you know, maybe this guy isn't the one for me because he's he's doing this and he's making me feel this way. And he's trying to limit this for me that I mean, the, the signs are usually there. There's sometimes we just choose to ignore them, which we shouldn't mm-hmm. do. But it just happens anyway, because. Oh, but he's he may be this, you know, he might control this. He might do this to me, but he's so amazing at doing blank, fill in the blank. Mm -hmm. You know, oh, he's different than fill in the blank. The signs are usually there. Like sometimes the yellow lights. I had a conversation with my father before. He told me that you can't ignore the yellow lights because they are there for a reason. You know, what we're talking about tonight is not just yellow lights. These sound like fucking traffic cones, like a mile worth of traffic cones telling you like, hey, you got to stop ahead. You know, Mm -hmm. it's like not just. Not just a one real light, it's like a mile of signs letting you know you can't ignore the flags. You have to know that this person has this going on with them. So I you just gotta make sure that you get out of there early. You don't don't stay in there for sure. Yeah. So I'm you know, I'll I'll give you know, I'll give a little backstory. And you, you gave a backstory, I'll I'll give a little backstory about it. Like like she said, we did grow up in an abusive home. Um so the main, the, um, a big problem a lot of people say is when they grow up in homes like that, when they experience things, they always say, well, I'm going to make sure my kids don't have to go through that. And you said at a younger age, but first of all, I like to say this now. Uh, I love my mother with all my heart and I love my father with all my heart. I love both mm-hmm. of them and I will take a bullet for either one of them. I'll lay down on the railroad tracks, whatever it takes for either one of them, because both of them have, were integral parts of my life and me being the person I am today. Mm-hmm. With that being said, they obviously weren't perfect for each other. They weren't good for each other, but they're good people, if that makes sense. Uh, they both lived through very stressful and t- tedious lives, and that affected them early on because they weren't able to get the help they need. Which is why I'm here today with this podcast. I want you guys to understand that you need to get help. If you if you feel like if you're going through this type of thing in life, like a domestic domestic relationship, like getting abused emotionally, mentally or physically, get out of it and get the help you need before you jump into another relationship. Mm -hmm. Um, With that being said, my father, and my mother were right for each other. What happens when people are not right for each other? Arguments and and you know abuse abuse happens and i'm i'm my they both live very stressful lives like that so i'm not putting people's business out there but it's the facts it's, it is what it is my parents are good people but they weren't good for each other so yeah. l- looking at that growing up i i made the mistake of telling myself when i was younger and it's everyone telling themselves when they see domestic violence they're like I, you know what i'm never gonna be like that when i get older i'm never gonna do that you know, instead of thinking it, you have to think about why the person is the way there is. They, they, didn't, they didn't grow up and say, hey, I want to be abusive towards my partner. That's not a uh-huh. goal they set in their life. That's what they were exposed to growing up. That's what they had to see. That's what they, they never got help for that because they never realized that's an issue. They thought that's how it's supposed to be. And that's not the case. So I want to break that stigma. You know, any type of abuse, like I said, it does have to be physical. You know, it could be mental. It could be emotional abuse. Hey, you know, you look ugly in that. Don't wear that. You know, oh, what are you, stupid or something in front of company? Like, that type of shit is abuse. That's abuse. If you love someone, you shouldn't make them feel like they're insignificant. At any point in time, you should put them at at, at the level you are, if not better, especially if you're married to this person. You know, you should not make them feel like they're they're beneath you just for laughs or whatever the hell reason why you want to do that. So... I want to put you guys, we're all adults here, uh, power and control and mind control. That's what abuse is, pretty much. Mm-hmm. I, we're all adults here. Like I said, I said three times, I'm going to say it four times. If you're in an abusive relationship, I need you to step back, examine it, and not just physically abuse. Just because he's not hitting you doesn't mean that he's not abusing you. Like Anna said, emotionally, make you feel like, oh, you'll never find anybody better than me. Oh, look at you. You're this, that, that. I need you to step back and think about what you want for your kids and your grandkids. You don't want them to grow up with that in their life. You don't want them to feel like they're insignificant because that's what you felt like. And you didn't have you didn't think it was necessary for you to move on. 
because it, it travels. It's genetics, man. I'm telling you, it's in, it's embedded in their mind like DNA. There's nothing they can do about it. That's what they grow up, and that's all they know, because mm-hmm. that's what you decide to sit around for. So, and you want to give me some feedback? I mean, I agree 100. percent Just you have to just get out of there because if you don't, it's just it's gonna be a never-ending cycle, like. And I, I, I get, you know, why domestic violence is so underreported with, you know, the victims not wanting to come out about it, but also the fact that we need to do better as a country and as a society, I feel like. I feel like we don't take it serious enough. And I think that contributes as well to the victims just not coming forward about it because they feel like it's not that serious or... He hits me because he loves me, and that's just not right. I recently watched a movie called I, Tanya. It's about a figure skater named Tanya Harden. She was um, from, I don't remember, it was like the 90s or 2000s or something like that. I wasn't watching figure skating, so I don't remember. But she um, basically, it showed the story of her life, and she was abused by her mother her whole life. Like, her mother was, like, her, you know, coach type of person, and she she hit her to the point where, you know, she got older, and she married a man who did the exact same thing as her mother, and she just thought it was normal. He, he hits me because he loves me, but that's not the case. If you ever even have that thought, or if he does this because he loves me, that's wrong. That's not why. Somebody, he can't, he doesn't love himself at all either. Like, that's not what love is. Like, Thur was saying at the beginning about how love is supposed to be unconditional. That's not love. Someone should never be afraid of you at any point during a relationship. Yeah. To think about that. I'm going to say that one more time. And you guys can quote that. Someone should never be afraid of you or you should never be afraid of anyone during any point in a relationship. Period. There's no exception. You should never feel like you are in danger, and that person should never feel like they're in danger of you. Period. Any point in a relationship, at any time. That's unacceptable. That's unacceptable. When you get mad, they should not be afraid of you. And, and, and when you argue with someone, the whole purpose of an argument is to make someone see your point of view. Your whole purpose of an argument is not to belittle, belittle somebody. If you're going to belittle somebody, then don't argue with them. Your argument, it's like a debate. Debate with your partner. Don't 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 and throw insults out there. Don't use like you know derogatory language. You don't have to curse your your wife or your girlfriend out to get your mm-hmm. point across, man. Like come on, that's the sign of weakness that you have to do that. And you like, don't well, always have like, to agree. Like you don't. You don't have to always agree. <laughs> but when you do disagree. You should make that person see your point of view in a positive way. You don't have to make them feel like they're beneath you because they don't agree with you. Right. So, like I said, vice versa with women. And when you're talking to your husband, you should not approach that approach your man and, and like pretty much like emasculate him as a man because he doesn't agree with you. Hey, you're not this, you're not that, and blah, blah, blah. A real man does this. <sighs> that that that's I mean, come on, man. That, just thinking about it, like relationships, they're really not that hard, honestly. Like, really, they're really not. You know I mean, sitting back <laughs> looking at it, you're you're with somebody, you're supposed to be there for them, and you're supposed to encourage them. You're not supposed to belittle them. You belittle them, that plant seeds in their mind, and them seeds in their mind end up becoming insecurities and anxieties because they're afraid yeah. that if they say something back to you, you're going to hit them, and blah, blah, blah. And now they go, that transfers over to the kids now. And now your kids grow up having anxiety in school, and they don't have no idea why they have anxiety, and they're afraid to to, to fucking go to the goddamn bathroom by themselves. They have no reason why they just have random anxiety attacks, but just because you are decided to stay in a relationship with someone who's abusive. Right. So. Oh man. I'm I'm sorry, man. I, I don't want to really get going like that, man. You know, I don't want to I don't want to shake the table too bad tonight. I see people a little in the, in the in the chat room getting a little rowdy, but it is what it is. This is all. This is literally what's coming off my mind. This is stuff I've read. This is stuff I've been through. 
You should not be afraid. You should not actually come home and be afraid in your own house. You should be able to say what you want to say without fear. Uh, just like we talked about last week with Tyler and Bobby with PTSD, it doesn't just affect the military community. If you grow up in a domestic, uh, domestically abusive household, you have PTSD from that. You don't know what you could say or what you would do that will cause you to get hit or cursed out. You know, you grow up with that and you never get treatment for it because you don't realize you get PTSD from your own house. You just live in life like, hey, you know what? This is normal for someone to tell me that I'm a piece of shit and I'm worthless and I'll never be worth anything because that's what I grew up with. Mm-hmm. And that's not that's not true. So a lot of people are living with PTSD and they don't even realize it. Like I said, it doesn't just happen from military experiences. It can happen from growing up in your own house or as a kid. You know, your parents yelling at you for doing something and hitting you and just... Yeah. I, that's, that fucks you up in the long run, honestly, for lack of a better term. It fucks you up. You should not be walking on eggshells in your house and unsure of what you're doing next or how you know live your life. Like you said, I don't really want to get too much started, but... Actually, you know what? Fuck it. I do want to get too much started. <laughs> let's go there. Let's go there. Uh, it's let's talk it out for a reason. Like, it's just... It, that shit is real. Like... Anxiety and depression, that, it, it really carries over, you know, into the kids as well. Like, it, it, even if you don't feel like, you know, you can do it for yourself, do it for your kids because that, that type of thing sticks with them through their whole life. Um, I just want to say this about domestic violence. The biggest thing is we need to bring awareness, like I said, as a society, because if we don't do that, we're just going to stay on the same path. You know, people who are either too ashamed or just too scared to talk about it. And if it's not talked about, how are we going to come up with a solution? How are we going to help? Most of these people, you know, most people that are going through this, need counseling that's the thing people need therapy nobody wants to go to therapy therapy is looked down upon especially you know in the black community nobody wants to talk about it but that's important i think therapy is important i think therapy can prevent a lot of the domestic violence situations that occur something as simple as going to counseling and talking about what you saw as a child or you know what what you think about or like Sometimes I feel like I want to punch the wall or sometimes I feel like I want to hit my partner. Go to counseling. Go to therapy. Talk about it. People just don't, you know, take therapy as serious as they should. But it really is a big solution for a lot of situations. People need to address their issues, you know. And you you, you hit the hell nail right on the head when you said... People don't go to counseling because it's frowned upon in the black community. That's my long-term goal from this podcast. Not just the black community, but minorities, every community. My long-term goal of this podcast is to change the stigma against mental health. I want people to feel like that mental health is something that should be consciously on your mind to address and also consciously on your mind to make sure that you're in a good spot mentally. You need to be in a position yeah. where you feel like you can interact with others. You don't need to have your own issues and take on someone else's. You need to be seeking therapy. If you've been through some things, all that, you know, all that, uh, oh, I look like a punk. I posted it as a Facebook status, and uh, my boy, the Aaronator on Twitter, made it into a, 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 tw- a t- uh, he made a picture of me, like kind of like the Kaepernick Nike theme, where it was like, I'm believing something, even if it means you lose everything. So my thing was, believe in something even if it makes you look weak so other people could feel strong i was very transparent in my first episode about what i got going on with me as far as like anxiety and depression i've dealt with depression earlier this year like i said i've had anxiety attacks i i don't care about what the fuck people think about me this is what i think about myself this is what i've been through so for me being open like that it makes other people feel comfortable they feel strong enough to be able to come out about it i don't care about like i said i really don't care about what other people think about me I care about what I think about myself because that's what's most important. I need to get myself in a position health-wise. When you're dealing with domestic violence, you need to get yourself in a position health-wise. You need to get that 
what you think is a healthy relationship is not a healthy relationship. That's not healthy to be afraid to go in your own house. You should not be. You should not feel like it's healthy that if I say some a certain way, he's going to go upside my head. So I'm not going to. That's not healthy. You should be okay. you should be in a relationship where you're free to express yourself no matter what. You should not feel any type of fear at any time in the place that you lay down at, at night to go to sleep where your stuff is. There should be no fear. There should be no anxiety. There should be no depression. You should not feel like this man is telling me that I can't do this because blah, blah, blah. Or this woman is going to do this to me because I do this. That's not fucking healthy, man. Like, I don't understand what's so hard for people to understand about that. 50 percent, Anna. I, I said earlier in the episode. Earlier today, yeah. 40, 40 minutes ago, 50% of domestic violence cases go untalked about. They're unnoticed. They're unreported. 50%. Think about that. This, how many people are in America? I don't know. Maybe like 2 billion, maybe. Let's say 2 billion. So, fuck, I don't know how many are married. Let's say 500 million or some shit like that. Okay. Let's, let's say half of 500 million are dealing with some type of some type of domestic violence. That's 250 million people. So that's, let's say 125 million people are not reporting domestic violence. That's, that's fucking... I, I don't. I mean, that's staggering, right? 50% goes unreported? Yeah. You know, why they go, you, know, you know why they go unreported, Anna? I'll tell you why they go unreported. Because that person is afraid for their life. They think yeah. if they say something to somebody, like a family member, a friend, a coworker, the police, they think they're going to get killed because they're dating somebody who's completely on edge. And this guy probably is like, hey, if you tell somebody about what I did to you, I'm going to kill you. That's why they don't say nothing. Mm-hmm. But you know how you avoid getting to that point? Leave in the beginning when you get the first sign. Those yellow, those yellow lights, they're there. Yep. They let you know. Sometimes they're not even yellow lights. Sometimes they're as bold as... Uh, fucking tr- there's uh, there's fucking traffic cones for a mile letting you know hey there's a stop up up there you know this person is nuttier than squirrel shit they let yeah. you know they, their signs are there for sure I just I just yeah. can't believe fifty fifty percent is a high ass number I could have seen I could imagine it being like maybe fifteen or twenty that's still pretty high but half of them yeah half of them half of, think about your neighborhood everybody think about your neighborhood. Think about how many people live in your neighborhood. Think about what could be going on in your neighborhood. You don't even know about it. Nobody knows about yeah. it. Like you said at the beginning, the, the statistic is one in three women. One in three women. That's that's crazy to me, man. That's crazy. It's, it's people you go to work with. It's people you see every day going through this at home, and they hide it behind makeup. You know, they hide the black eye behind makeup. You know, they, they hide the emotional abuse. It's just, you never know what someone's going through. I've seen it as a meme, and it's true. You never know what someone's going through, so be kind to everybody. You yeah. saying a, a kind word to someone could could just literally impact their life in such a positive way. That can make them feel amazing. Just you saying, you know, hey, you, you know, you look pretty today, or hey, I like your dress. Something simple as that could change their whole outlook. It could, it could give them something to cling on to, because like I said, they at home, Fifty percent are not, are not reporting it. So it's now generally recognized that experiencing domestic violence and abuse is associated with m- mental health problems, including anxiety and depression. Depression makes people shoot themselves in the fucking head, and like people don't understand that them not getting the help they need for them, and them not leaving these relationships could cost them their life. Yeah. I mean, that's so crazy to me. You you could lose your life because of that. And even, you know, even beyond the depression, you know, suicide, a lot of these situations do end up with the partner, you know, killing their partner. There there are situations that do end up like that. And that's an example of it being too late, you know, because a lot of times you don't know until it's too late. So, uh, uh, one thing that people tend to do when they in a domestic, you know, relationship when they're dealing with this kind of stuff, domestic violence in their relationship, they try to go to couples therapy. Do you really think that you that you sit next to this person that you're going to be at home with by yourself alone that you're going to be completely honest with the therapist? Mm-hmm. I'll, answer, I'll, answer, I'll, I'll answer for you. No, you will not. No, you will not. You're not going to be honest with him. You're not going to be honest with therapists in the couples therapy. Couples therapy doesn't work. 
You need to, if you're in a relationship with someone who's abusive domestically, you don't need to be with that person. What the fuck is therapy going to do to help you and that person out? He needs to help himself out first. And he, you need to help yourself out. You're not going to help each other out at the same time because you're not going to be completely honest. If you're sitting on a couch with someone that you're going to sleep with at night and you're like, hey, you know, he beat my ass earlier because I gave him fucking Frosted Flakes instead of Cheerios. Do you think that's going to end well that night? No, it will not end well that night. I'm not trying to be funny either, man. It's just, it's just serious. Like, you need to get out of that relationship. Couples therapy does not help with those type of relationships at all. The only thing that's going to help you from that relationship is you leaving. Heidi said in capital letters, no, it doesn't, with an exclamation point. Exactly. She's agreeing with me because it's true. <laughs> Separate therapy. You need, to fix your, you need to focus on yourself. You don't need to focus on that person. Period. Well, how do you – like, Anna, I want to know what you think about couples therapy. Like, do you think that will help somebody out? Like, say, say they're in a relationship with someone who's abusive, and this person has deep-rooted – deep-rooted, not just – like, deep-rooted family – history of domestic violence. Do you think going to a couple therapy will help that out? What, no. If, if, if it's to the point where their situation has become one of domestic violence, no, I don't. However, if it's a person that, you know, has not a history of, you know, you're doing domestic violence, but somebody that's witnessed it, maybe, because, you know, that's being proactive and just trying to, you know, nip it in the bud before it even gets to that point. But as far as people trying to go to couples therapy as like a, a after solution or try to like have that as a band-aid, no, I absolutely do not think it's going to work. But I, I think that, like you said, you need to separate and that person needs to figure it out for themselves in their own therapy because there's no way at that point that you guys to get, need to be together, you know, at all. We see it all the time in the news. All the time. Yeah. Husband killed wife. Wife killed husband. Blah, blah, blah. The, the, nigga, he didn't, the dude didn't just wake up one day and say, you know what? I'm going to shoot my wife in the head. He didn't just wake up one day and say that. that that's over time. You know? Uh, same thing with the wife. She didn't wake up one day and say, you know what? I'm going to put bleach inside his, his Kool-Aid every day for her week until he dies. That... <laughs> That's that sounds fucked up, but it's true. You know, I've read, right. I saw something about it. Some somebody killed somebody over time like that. That doesn't just happen. Just all like literally, like the person just wake up one day and decide to do that. That's basically from from abusing that person and decide. You know what? They're they're a piece of crap. I don't want them alive anymore. So that's mm -hmm. there. Someone Kia says. Um, Kia was actually a guest a couple weeks ago. She says therapy only works when both people are open to the experience. Open meaning honest and accountable. Accountability is something that America does not take any part in at all. We don't we don't believe in being accountable about anything in a household. We just blame everything on our environment. Uh, we blame everything on what we've been through. Yet we consciously know that we are part of the problem, and we can easily start working towards fixing it ourselves. But instead, we just blame it on everything else and just throw it under the bus. And like, hey, you know what? Mm -hmm. That's not my. I'm like this because of how I grew up. I'm like this because of where I grew up at. I just it's just sad that people just don't don't take things seriously like that, like counseling. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to you just sitting in just going to counseling is not gonna help. You have to be honest and accountable for your actions and the reason why you are where you are. Mm hmm Just yeah, that, I I didn't even, you know, consider couples therapy for domestic violence. But I that's I feel like that's just a setup. Like that's probably gonna just piss the partner off more, if anything, you know. But, that's 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 exactly why I said like you really think someone who's actually being domestically abused is gonna go to counts go to a couples therapy session with the person that abuses them that that they sleep with every night, and they're know. gonna <laughs> go there sit there and be like, hey, this guy. Got mad at me because I didn't iron their pants the right way, and he threw a fucking shoebox at me. You think they're gonna tell the counselor that why you sit next to him on the couch? No. No, absolutely not. You know why? Because at the end of the day, after that hour is up, and they're like, okay, see you in the week next week, and they hand them a card, they're gonna go home with that person, and that's the person that they see for a whole week. Yep. Alone in the bedroom, 
God forbid that there are kids in the rooms next door, but alone in the bedroom, this is the person that you're with. This is the person that's that you that you feel like you have to be with because you have insecurity because you dealt with domestic violence before. It's it's a vicious cycle, everybody. It's a vicious cycle. You grow up with it, you think it's normal because your mom went through it, because your dad went through it. It's a vicious cycle. And we need to break that shit. That shit's not fucking normal. You should not be a fucking afraid of anybody that you're with at any time about anything. You should be open. You should not have to feel like you have to withhold information from this person. You should feel like you should talk to that person at any time about anything without being judged, without being emotionally, mentally, or physically abused at any time. Period. Uh-huh. There's no, there's, there's literally no exceptions at all. No one should ever put their hands on you in a harmful manner at any point in time that you're in a relationship with. No one should ever in a relationship make you feel like you're insignificant or that you're worthless by telling you things like, hey, you know what, you're, you're blah blah blah. You'll never find anybody like me. You know, oh, you're like Anna said, like, oh, you're fat. You, you should never feel that at any time when you're in a relationship. So, yeah. I don't want. I just, I'm like I said, I'm gonna reiterate that. You know. You should never feel like you're insignificant to someone, and you should never let anyone say anything to you in any way because you're in a relationship with them. 50% goes unnoticed. And like Anna says, it's not just men beating on women. It's not just people getting beaten on, period. Mm-hmm. Emotional and mental abuse has long-lasting effects as well because the things are embedded in your mind, and you start believing them. My mom, my mom says if users hide that side of who they are, they can only hide it for so long. It comes out, and yeah, they can only hide it for so long. Like early on in a relationship, they can't hide it, but the first sign of it, that's that yellow light. Don't yep. ignore that yellow light. I'm telling you, don't ignore that. Don't move in with somebody because you guys been together so many years. Oh well, we've been together for so long, but you know, and well, it's the first time he's done that. It's not gonna get better. I'm telling you, it never does. It gets worse before it gets better. So, and if you want to give people some closing words, I'm gonna let you go ahead and take the floor for a little bit before I close it down. Um, okay, just kind of a recap, I guess. Basically, domestic violence is super, super underrepresented, like, it's just not talked about as much as it should be at all. And I personally think that's you know a big step to. Ending the stigmas about domestic violence and getting a lot of people the support they need for domestic violence is to bring awareness. Um, secondly, I think therapy, personal therapy, not you know couples therapy, but therapy for people that have witnessed domestic violence, have suffered from domestic violence, or even if you just like know somebody or are really close with somebody that has dealt with domestic violence, Talk to a therapist because even if you don't think in that moment that it's affecting you, you'll look up five, ten years down the road and, you know, you'll be jacked up from something that happened a long time ago that you didn't even realize was subconsciously affecting you. So just domestic violence is so serious, and I just I don't think that it's taken as serious as it needs to be. So just do your research get your therapy and talk about it like it's not one of those things that it's it it shouldn't just be a secret you shouldn't be ashamed about it talk about it like just talk about it talking it out does typically help but you have you definitely have to take action for sure so with that being said i'm gonna go ahead and close the show down I appreciate everybody who tuned into the chat room live. If you haven't, if you're not tuning in live, I still appreciate you for catching the podcast version. Um, I hope everyone has a good week, and I'll talk to you guys next week. Do your research.